The same message or a vague message sent by your users can mean different things depending on the user's preferences, their geographic location, the current flow the user is in, or just the topic of the conversation. So let's say, for example, uh, a user sends your bot the thumbs up sticker. Uh, you could send back a thumbs up emoji response. Let's do that. Or even a random text message response, like got it. I can click that again. So that's randomized. But what if you knew that the thumbs up was in reaction to an event in your conversational experience and you could tailor your response to that event? So using context in dialogue flow enable you to deliver a more contextual response. So I've taken this restaurant bot template on ManyChat and I'm going to start to add some AI to it. I've loaded up the template already here in, uh, in Messenger. And uh, if you click the restaurant menu in the welcome message, you'll see how a user is given a carousel of menus that the restaurant offers. And if a user wanted to browse a, a restaurant's menu like this, they could just Google the restaurant and browse a menu on a website. In a conversational experience, it's more natural and much more likely that a user is just going to ask questions. These are things that users might say to your bot. Um, let's add one. I'd like, uh, what was one of them? Oh, pizza. It's right there. And you just hit enter and you'll see that it recognizes that it's, it's a food entity. So Dialogflow will recognize this word in my phrase um, as a value and it'll know what to do with it when the user sends any of these phrases. So I added the, I just added uh, words, it could have been any item on the restaurant menu. So we'll want to create two dialogue flow intents. I've created uh, this one here, food request on menu. And I've created another one here called food request not on menu. Can we get burritos? And you'll see that burritos doesn't have an entity associated with it. It's not in our menu. So all you need to do is highlight that and you'll be given options pick at sys.any and this will tell dialog though that any value in the phrase which hasn't been explicitly defined as a value in our food entity will trigger a different intent so uh, we can just save that and uh, i could have used any keyword here as well i just use burritos but uh it could have been any keyword. As long as it's not part of our food entity, this intent will get triggered, provided the training phrases are the same for food not on our menu, food on our menu. Do you have um, tacos? Yes, we have tacos. And then if I ask, uh, how about burritos? Sorry, we don't have burritos on the menu. See, so it took that any value. In this case, it's burritos. And that was the training, a training phrase I had in there. And it was able to respond. So you see, um, sorry, we don't have any on the menu. So... After telling the user if we have something or we don't have something on our menu, I'm probably going to get a response. And when I set context, I'll know the context of their response. So in my, let's, where is it here? My food request on menu, we just need to set the context here. And so when you set the context, I'm going to set the output context and what I'm going to name it is I'm going to name it evaluating menu. So I did this before, so it just populates, but you just need to type in a desired name for the context and hit enter to commit it. Um, and so I've named it evaluating menu because this is exactly what the user is doing. They're asking questions 
and they're evaluating my restaurant menu to see if it's something that they want to or somewhere they want to go and make a reservation uh so just to keep in mind when you're naming your contacts you can only use alpha numeric names and you can't use spaces but underscore and dashes are totally acceptable so i've added an output context to here and i'm also going to add an output context to the same one because this the context is the same they're evaluating the menu so we just type as i've added that it puts it in now you'll see an, a number next to your context name you see this number here that's right that's called the lifespan context lifespan so by default contacts expire after five requests or 20 minutes from the time they were activated so uh you know you might get a, a few messages exchanged with your user and you want to keep the context alive um so to keep it for active for a while just keep the default of five um, or if you only want the lifespan to be short because the topic of conversation is going to change just click the number to edit it and i'm going to set oops just click the number select it and change it i've changed it to two since the users and i'm going to do that for here too actually let me save that and i'm going to go here i'm going to change our lifespan to two and so i've changed it to two because the user is going to ask if we have a type of food and then we'll respond if we do or we don't have the item and then we'll wait for another message from the user so we're going to want to keep the context active for a few of these requests now i'm going to want to create two additional intents because I'm going to want to capture the response to our restaurant menu. And you can see I've named my, my, my intents here, happy user evaluating menu and sad user <laughs> evaluating menu. If the user's happy that we have tacos on the menu. They might express their happiness with that. Maybe they'll send us the thumbs up, the blue thumbs up. And you can see I've actually put it in here in events, thumbs up. Or they might send some other positive phrases like great, sounds good, thanks, that's awesome, whatever. You just keep adding your, your training phrases and to capture the user's uh, intent. And so in general, you, you'll have several intents for thanks or the blue thumbs up sticker in your experience and each can have a different input context. So you'll wanna, you wanna add an input context here let's just add our evaluating menu okay so that way you know they could be somewhere else in your user experience and they say thanks or any of these training phrases or send you the thumbs up but if the context is evaluating menu because here we're talking about uh the users asking questions and we're responding that we have something that they like then we've we've maintained the context here so We've actually shared it here. So what happens is when you add an input context, it's going to automatically add the output context. I'm going to set the lifespan of this context to zero. And that's because I want the I want to reset the context as soon as the intent is matched. And let's do that here too. Let's add our this is our our sad reaction. So the context is they're evaluating the menu. We've added that as the input context, and then we're, we're, uh, we, it automatically set the, uh, the output context. So, you know, if the user's disappointed, they're going to respond with something like, damn, that sucks. Oh, well, too bad. And so we have our input and output context, and we can tailor a response. And so here our response is, you know, well, we'll still, we'll, we hope you'll still join us. Would you like to make a reservation? So our bot is, is getting smart here. Um, you can see that the context is shared between all of these, a sad user, a happy user, and all from the context we set here from their, from the request. Here's a request for something they didn't have on the menu. And here's a request for something that we do have on the menu. Okay, we've got all of our context set up for this in Dialogflow. And once you get familiar with it, it becomes really easy to create these relationships. Let's, uh, let's start over. So I have a, an intent that will restart the bot. 
And let's go to our restaurant menu. And let's ask, do you have tacos? Yes, we have tacos. And now let's send our thumbs up and see what happens. And we got the right response. It's one of our most popular items. And by the way, we have an all-you-can-eat buffet every Tuesday. Want to make a reservation? Okay, so now that I've explained to you a little bit about context, uh, I gave you a really basic example. You might build something more sophisticated. You could have multiple input contexts and multiple output contexts. The scenario that I created was what you call a basic follow-up. So the user asked pizza, we then responded. The user then followed up uh, with awesome, and then we responded. So Dialogflow actually has a way to create these follow-up scenarios. They're called follow-up intents. And you really just need to uh, roll over any of your intents and you'll see add follow-up intent. And Dialogflow will automatically set the context for you. Now let me give you an example here. Let's create a new intent. I'm going to call this delivery. And let's say the user asks, do you deliver? Will you deliver? And I'll add one more, which is just delivery, nice and short with a question mark. And I'm going to create a response here. Yes, we deliver. What area? are you located in? So let's assume this is a restaurant that's based in Southern Florida, in the Miami area. And they offer delivery services in the Miami area. And what we've done here is I've created an entity called Geo Areas. And if I click into Geo Areas, you'll see that I've added all of the areas in Southern Florida in the Miami area, Miami Beach, South Beach. And so these are, you know, even downtown. So let's remember geo areas. Now let's go back to our intents and we're gonna create a follow-up intent. So you click this and you'll see if you're asking a question and you just wanna solicit a yes, no response, you might pick one of these options, but this is a custom, a custom follow-up. And you'll see that it automatically creates an intent nested under the parent intent. So this is the parent, this is the child. And we can just click into that and it automatically creates the title. We'll call it, change that to delivery yes. And you'll see how Dialogflow automatically adds the context. This is the input context here. It creates it for us. So uh, let's say the user says, I live downtown. So it automatically triggers our geo areas entity. What if they just say uh, South Beach? So they don't even provide any additional text. They just provide their area. Again, uh, it's, it's going to be the geo areas intent that Dialogflow recognizes. So now we've added uh, now we just need to add a response. So we'll respond, yes, we deliver to, and what we'll do is we'll just type dollar sign geo areas. And so if I say I, I live in South Beach, then Dialogflow will respond, yes, we deliver to South Beach. So let's just save this. Okay, so let's just save this. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll go back to our list of intents and we're gonna create another follow-up intent for this parent delivery intent. You'll see if I click this arrow, it'll see that we added delivery yes, we need to add a delivery no. So we just click, 
roll over the parent intent. We click custom and you'll see it created another child for this intent. We click into it and we'll rename it to no. And you'll see again, Dialogflow automatically creates the input context for us. And we will add a, oh, we have to add some training phrases. All we need to say here is anything that is not an area that we deliver to. So I live in, we'll just put XXX. And you just highlight that. And we want to find that at sys.any. So now it's any value. Um, even if we put just XXX. There we go. And now we just add a response. Sorry, we don't deliver to. Now I could put dot any, uh, dollar sign any, or I could just create a generic response. Sorry, we don't have to deliver to your area. Uh, but let's personalize it with the the actual input from the user. So here we go. Let's test it out. Giving the agent a minute to train. We should get a message. Uh, let's see. Do you deliver? Yes, we deliver. What area are you located in? And so let's say we give them an area like Orlando. Sorry, we don't deliver to Orlando. Now, what if I just say South Beach? Yes, we deliver to South Beach. What's really cool here is that the context was maintained. So I showed you about context lifespan. So when the user entered Orlando, we were able to respond, no, we don't deliver to Orlando, but then they just needed to enter a different location and they the context was maintained and they got the response that they needed. Stay tuned for episode five. We're gonna go further into context and taking this restaurant bot template and really turning it into an AI restaurant bot. <laughs>